This video is brought to you by BizWire TV, where your news is made. So, yeah, um, uh, thank you very much for um, having me. Um, I was asked to talk uh, to you a little bit about um, IR um, in uh, change management. Uh, how can IR help um, a company um, to drive change and um, and uh, get um, to the next level? So um, what um, what I just wanted um, to, to start with is, um, of course, um, investor relations we know is um, there's the classical form of uh, financial communication, kind of communicating your results, uh, communicating the equity story. But um, it has evolved over the last 20 years enormously. Um, kind of the next step was probably, um, in a broader sense, um, kind of communicating um, the corporate governance also kind of becoming a sounding board um, to management on um, different aspects of corporate um, governance and also then uh, kind of um, feeding that back to the um, capital market. Um, the next stage is then, of course, uh, one further where how can you actually um, help steer the company? How can you de help develop the corporate strategy? And um, so I just, um, before, I tell you um, where, how we have done it at RWE or we are doing it at RWE and what it has actually um, helped doing us um, in terms of um, corporate change, uh, transformation. Let us just look at the different roles of uh, investor relations. So as I said, the classic role of IR, um, you try to gain and maintain um, the trust of the financial market, de develop your shareholder base, um, manage uh, capital, exp um, capital market expectations and uh, this kind of leading to a fair value of your, um, of your uh, company. Um, it is all um, just a part of your, of your stakeholder base um, and uh, I guess IR is always in the sense um, being heard by all the other stakeholders as well. So you do have to have in mind um, other stakeholders like your employees, NGOs, um, governments um, and uh, and press and of course also support um, other parts of the company in terms of uh, preparing rating uh, communications to rating agencies, banks and so on and so forth. Um, but as I said, I think most of the IR teams are now a little bit more than just a kind of um, a speak, a kind of a, a yeah, um, speaker, a ex external speaker of the company. They have become much more of a sounding board um, for um, some aspects of corporate governance, be it um, um, the KPIs which, uh, which companies should um, steer with um, capital allocation is a very important matter which is also um, very um, dear to investors' hearts. Uh, financial transparency driving that. Um, performance measurement, um, that's something which uh, investors want to hear more and more about, um, and uh, management compensation also uh, quite an important aspect. Um, and um, you have um, a kind of various uh, abilities to address um, those different um, matters, either in your uh, standard results communications, but of course also the AGM is a great, um, at least I, in Britain maybe a little bit less, in, in Germany it is um, quite a big, um, a big thing, the AGM, and it's a, it's a great, uh, great platform to communicate there as well. But of course um, corporate uh, transactions is always um, a good, um, um, kind of uh, gives you a good platform to, to communicate on those uh, different aspects and uh, capital market days of course as well. So, but how do you get to the next level? Um, how can you actually ensure that um, you have some input in the strategic agenda? Um, and why uh, might it be actually important and, uh, and drive, uh, drive value for, um, for the company? And here, um, it's very important that as investor relations, you have the capital market input. You know what uh, your investors are looking for um, in your strategy, in your communication, and you can help to um, you can help the company to develop uh, a strategy which will be supported by the capital market. And um, 
we call it internally, it's the devil's advocate. You can ask uh, all the questions which you are getting asked uh, by investors and ask them internally. So you have, um, you're the one department which has the outset in view. Um, and it's also very clear that investors have one um, objective and that's one only, which is increasing the value of their holding, um, which can be sometimes a little bit one di dimensional, but um, at least they have that <laughs> objective. Um, and then the other thing is, um, as investor relation, you don't have individual goals. So you don't, you're not um, a segment of your company which wants maybe wants to have more, um, more um, cash for their investments or has their own agenda. You kind of have to speak for the whole company and you have the whole company in mind. So that um, are the advantages. So how did we do it? Um, at RWE and what did we actually do? So um, RWE, a German utility, um, got under immense pressure um, starting, well probably it started a little bit after um, the 2008 financial crisis um, when um, the economies um, declined um, with it uh, in time, power prices came down but it was actually exacerbated by, in 2011, after Fukushima, when the German government decided to phase out nuclear power um, in Germany, where we suddenly lost um, part of our earnings. Um, we started to mitigate that um, with um, cost um, um, efficiency programs to mitigate the earnings fall, um, and went on, um, kind of the decline <laughs> continued, uh, we went on then to dispose of uh, non-core uh, businesses to uh, improve the balance sheet. Um, unfortunately, that didn't help either. <laughs> and at the beginning of 2015, we came to a point where, from an IR perspective, we just said, we, it's, we cannot sell the story anymore. I mean, there was really, um, when I was asked to develop um, the presentation for our full year results, where we also gave, um, normally give our strategic update, it was kind of a point where we said, um, investors don't want to hear from us anymore because we do not come up with kind of, a, 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 we are not prepared to change. A few months before that, um, our main competitor in Germany announced a, um, a quite big um, transformational restructuring, um, and uh, we didn't seem to to react. Um, at the same time, the German government announced um, a potential phase out of coal, which would have kind of taken the other half of our earnings away. So. Um, we, as RR, we said, okay, uh, we have to, we have to um, kind of come up with a solution here. And um, we locked ourselves two days into a room and uh, kind of took a blank sheet of paper and said, if we could kind of rewrite the equity story, um, still having in mind what, as a company, we can offer, what would we do? And um, we kind of drew up um, our equity story and we went to the board and said, this is what we would like to do. This is how we would like to change the company. Um, what do you say? Um, the board was, um, yeah, they said, okay, um, got it. Uh, understand that uh, our story is very difficult to sell. And they sent us into a competition with another team. So they said, um, we will have a strategic workshop um, and you will have um, two competing teams um, to present um, uh, kind of strategic strategic options and then we will take it from there. That happened in August 2015 um, and uh, we had those two teams presenting. One option was um, chosen with um, the goal to develop it further and then um, it actually accelerated from there. I think when in end of August, beginning of September when we said we would explore this route I think nobody thought that on the 1st of December we would go out and actually say we are doing this. Um, so what did we do? Um, we actually decided to bundle um, our downstream businesses and our renewables businesses in a new company and um, bring that company to the market. Um, it's um, it has to be understood, this is the bigger part of our company. So our, from of RWE, 
Um, now the now called um, <coughs> company Energy is roughly 60 60 percent or almost two thirds um, of RWE. So this was a big kind of step. Um, what what did we think would it do? Uh, we thought that um, the advantages would be you kind of detach the two parts which have clearly the one part which is growing, which has um, um, stable earnings from the part which is more volatile uh, where the earnings are under pressure. Um, by um, kind of um, listing it and, and letting RWE hold on to a stake, um, we would allow RWE to have access or to, to further sell it down when they uh, need cash for their uh, long-term provisions, like uh, the nuclear provisions and the mining provisions. So it's still kind of, it, it provides uh, financial flexibility. And the other thing is we thought that um, before doing that, the part which was in within energy, um, investors didn't look at it. The investors didn't appreciate the value which was in that company because it was all overshadowed by the other parts of RWE, the conventional power generation. So over the last nine months, um, we were um, working on um, this IPO project. And um, as initiator of the idea, of course, investor relations um, did play a, a central role in that project. Um, and I also believe it was the key um, to have a successful IPO. We um, basically, um, we drove the equity story and made sure that we have all elements which investors were expecting of such a company in terms of um, transparency, um, dividend policy, um, management remuneration, um, medium term um, strategy, capital allocation. Um, we did have a, a few challenges along the way because one thing was, um, for example, at the beginning, our management um, was thinking of um, kind of maybe being kind of CEO at RWE and being CEO of uh, the subsidiary, uh, which investor relations said straight away, no, that's, that's a no-go. <laughs> it's absolutely, um, investors uh, would hate that. They need, to, uh, they need to be sure that there are two independent companies, that, want, that there is no conflict of interest there, um, that um, yeah, Energy has, can kind of follow its own strategy and RWE can do the same. Um, so that was that. The other thing was that um, along the way, we um, tried to kind of change some KPIs, which we reported, for example, at RWE, we have always um, provided uh, financial guidance on um, EBIT, where um, we kind of just thought RW, um, utilities were often valued on EBITDA multiples. So we said, if this is an IPO and you want a quick and dirty valuation from, from investors, then we should give um, guidance uh, of EBITDA. And, um, and also uh, management remuneration is something which was not, never kind of um, uh, very transparent and, um, and, and uh, total shareholder return didn't um, feature that well in, uh, previously in it. So we made sure that um, that, that was also um, looked after. In terms of the financials um, here, um, that was also kind of driven by us. Um, we made sure that um, it is, we, we took a valuation approach. So we made sure that we um, kind of set up a outside in view and model how the, how the capital market would look at, uh, at energy and model it to make sure that then exactly what they need, we would make transparent in um, the prospectus and um, the analyst presentation. And last but not least, also that we provided uh, a profit guidance, which is something in IPOs um, is not often done because of legal reasons. I must say, I spent a lot of time with lawyers over the last nine months, um, and but w we did get it done, and we put uh, we, we gave the market a profit guidance, which I believe was also an uh, underpinned the valuation in the end during the IPO. Um, marketing, of course, uh, was driven by us as well. Um, we made sure that uh, we got the investor targeting right, um, kind of what 
sort of company energy is, what investors would like um, to, or what, what, yeah, which, which type of investor would want to, to invest in it. Um, we also uh, kind of made sure that within the syndicate, which was uh, marketing the IPO, we had um, the right, um, or we had banks in there where we knew the analysts well, where we knew um, they write uh, very good research, and also in terms of some of the specialist sales um, people who have the best access um, in our sector to investors were there, um, and that uh, that really helped in terms of throughout the nine months getting um, kind of feedback from the market, um, what they might want to hear, what are their concerns, and addressing that along the way. And actually, the yeah, direct uh, investor dialogue throughout um, the process. I think it was um, very interesting because it doesn't happen often that a listed company actually IPOs part of, um, of, of itself. <laughs> and um, even the banks didn't know in some situations how to handle it because they often forgot that if we um, if we gave some information to the syndicate, which um, was normally we would under normal IPO uh, processes you would not make public, we said we as RWE we have um, the responsibility to treat or uh, we have to make public whatever we make public to one part of the financial market and we also couldn't distinguish if um, research analysts would speak to an investor if they are invested in RWE then of course you can't share private information because um, then you would make them insiders so there were um, some interesting discussions around that <laughs> So was it successful? Um, I do believe it was successful. Um, so um, on the left hand side you see our share price which um, from the day before we announced, um, oops it's kind of slid a little bit, but from the day when we announced um, the corporate restructuring um, then we kind of, um, the valuation transparency of, of energy tr started to to come through when we had our capital market day on energy. Um, we provided on the 1st of August, we had the energy analyst presentation, but which we made also public and where we had our um, profit guidance in. And then on the 7th of October, we finally listed um, energy on the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. Um, the IPO or the, the share price of energy, we had the first two days a little bit of pressure um, it was, we listed on the day after which the pound uh, had its sharp fall. So uh, it was, uh, well, until actually um, the week before the listing, the market was uh, very, very supportive. The last week of, uh, of book building, we actually um, had um, Draghi coming out and saying he might start um, taking back some of his quantitative easing measures and that um, kind of, uh, uh, that, that kind of pulled some of the, the yielding stocks down and, and, and energy is, is a yield stock. So um, with it, there was a little bit of a wobble there. Um, we still um, listed at the top end of the range. Uh, we decided to do that. Um, some now say maybe we should have given um, a euro less. Um, but uh, from, an I, from an RWE perspective, of course, um, in the end of the day, we got 36 euros instead of 35 euros. And we did have to do, yes, a little bit of stabilization. But after, the, after two days, it has traded up nicely. And it's actually holding now around uh, 37.50, uh, I think, something. So all in all, a very successful um, transaction. So what? What can be taken out of that? What, what are the learnings? So I believe that uh, investor relations should be more courageous. Um, you should kind of um, be seen, or e investor relations, uh, you can break up existing structures and processes. You can bring a different perspective to decision making. Um, you, you do know what the capital market is looking for, um, and, and you understand your investor base. And you can be a challenger, even, even if the company takes different decisions, um, nothing holds you back of challenging those um, decisions. And you should be the devil's advocate and just make sure that those decisions are being taken 
with everything in mind what the management should have in mind. Um, it's not a question of tools, it's a, a question of attitude also within, uh, within the company. So certainly a company has to learn how to deal with this um, kind of um, challenger uh, within uh, the company and has to accept it. Um, so there should be a speak up mentality um, within the company. And, uh, but also IR has to earn it. So you, you definitely have to do your part as well, kind of um, be transparent, feedback what the market is saying. Also bring your management in front of investors, the right investors where you know that it's a, it's a two-way dialogue so that they hear it um, themselves as well and that they trust you. And, um, and um, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a long process of work, hard work, and um, that, that you gain f um, the trust of management. But once you have it, you can actually, I think, uh, support them in their steering of the company. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience um, or points you might ma may draw from your own experience at all? Anybody? I just think you were very brave, the IR department. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, you. Well, the one thing I have to say if you are a company <coughs> under pressure, it's probably easier. So um, yes. it, it's kind of um, probably if everything goes right. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's more to the yes, exactly. I notice you said that you have to uh, uh, earn the trust of the board. Um, what steps can you take to earn the trust of the board except long-term relationship? And you didn't actually have that long a stretch of time. Well, as I say, I mean, I think um, in RW it started um, almost 15 years ago when, uh, when yeah, the R IR department, I mean, was n not newly set up, but the new person came and, um, and kind of made sure that... Um, in investor relations takes a central role and um, uh, we and this is not the case in in many um, German companies but we actually write the annual report ourselves and what that involves is of course you know your numbers inside out so you know you know the pages by heart of the annual report mm -hmm. and by that um, the capital market trusts you that you that they also can talk to you openly because you know the numbers, you know the company, um, and then you then also feed that back to management. So it's almost like you, you, you're working your way up in both ways, kind of gaining the trust of the capital market, but feeding that back. And also kind of if management um, kind of um, uh, feels that you what you're saying is actually right, <laughs> if you want, mm -hmm. if, if you give them um, the right input from the capital market, give them the right sense how the capital market might react to the one or the other um, message, then that, all, that kind of helps you gain um, their trust. And um, so it's certainly not something which comes overnight and, and you, need to, um, y you need to work on that. Yeah. You know, mentioned as well that there were two possible models of moving forward. Uh, one was adopted, one wasn't. Uh, were you just told which is going to be um, going to be going forward, or did IR have any influence in that whatsoever? Uh, we we were at the table when it was discussed. Um, I have to say, actually, it was not our suggestion. It was not our. That's option. what I was really asking. <laughs> so. And which is fine. I mean, in the end of the day, we kind of we took a step back and we said in, in the end of the day we want what is best for the company um, and and we accepted that uh, the kind of uh, the other option was uh, was actually uh, was actually better uh, as what we developed so um, yeah okay that's fine so do we have any further questions points on that presentation we do Did everybody hear that, just in case at the back? It's how IR changed during the course of uh, uh, dividing into the two companies. The department. the department, yeah, that's right. Thank you. So, yeah, so we had, um, we had to split up. So, in, in essence, um, that was another decision. Can we actually do IR out of one team for two companies? And we also took the decision now that that's not possible, especially if, if you want to be really independent. Um, so, we we said well we should probably try to 
make it equal teams in terms of experience um, within the team, um, which uh, meant that uh, Stefan Lovis, um, the previous head of IR at RWE, moved um, to Energy with, uh, with part of the team, and then I stayed at RWE um, and uh, with, with the other um, part of the team. In in total, what we are both trying to do is we are trying to do with less resources. So we are trying not to double up um, because um, at Energy there are some things which probably might be um, less um, intensive like the um, AGM because as long as RWE still has 77%, uh, you don't need such a big AGM. Um, and um, and then, for example, I said I can do without a fixed income or a person which is purely responsible for fixed income because all the um, senior bonds went uh, with energy. So actually, we well, we still have some hybrids, but um, it, it's much less of a fixed income than uh, than at energy. And um, so, yeah. Um, but um, I think we, we found a way where we split evenly. Um, we, we still talk to each other. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and it was not easy. I mean, it's, it's, it was uh, sometimes a very emotional process. Um, and, um, um, and also to get used to not, not talking about the other part anymore, because I'm not supposed to talk about energy because I should actually refer investors if they are really are interested in, in energy, I should refer them to my colleagues at energy and vice versa. So this is something we are still in the process of learning and, uh, and doing, but, um, and I think um, probably Stefan and I, we, we already are a step or two ahead because we have lived it for the last nine months and we have lived this process some other colleagues still have to um, get used to that a little bit, but um, yeah. Wow. But how big a, I know RWE owns 78% of energy, but how big a proportion of RWE is energy? I mean, how important is it to you? It? Uh, it's still very important. So this is the other thing what I'm, I mean, the thing is, <laughs> unfortunately, I couldn't take a break uh, after listing energy. Um, I always said I put a lot of energy in there. I mean, my last nine months were kind of um, spent in, in Germany. And uh, I think uh, I probably went to bed on average at midnight or yeah, <coughs> were some very late nights. But I, I invested that much because the success of the IPO was that should, uh, that was kind of very important for RWE um, because we were just under financial pressure. And so that, yeah, energy is very important to us still. The issue, so what, what happened now is, okay, IPO was done, um, successfully done, and now investors suddenly shifted back to, oh, and what is going on now at RWE? So um, what I'm struggling, well, struggling, but I, I now kind of I'm running <laughs> against the time is actually to get the equity story out for RWE um, um, because that was not in focus and that was fine. We didn't want to focus on RWE. We wanted to focus on energy, but um, but now we have to make sure we get that done. and uh, and. And precisely that kind of with energy still being 60% or more of our earnings and still fully consolidated, you have to find a way now in terms of transparency to show them the economic, um, what, what's the economic picture of RW without energy because we don't have strategic influence in energy anymore. So we only have one board, a uh, supervisory board member um, there is an agreement that we um, f we manage it like a financial holding, so um, no strategic influence, no decision in their capital allocation, no decision on their dividend. Um, so um, it, it's really just um, via the AGM that we could kind of influence it. But um, but yeah, and and kind of. Yet now you have to find a way to say, well, it's a financial holding, but we still fully consolidate it. So how, how actually can you extract or disaggregate, if you want, um, the, the balance sheets of the two companies? Because on the IFRS, um, that's, yeah, it's a consolidated group. <laughs>